Oh, hello there. And how are you doing? Oh, you are well. So am I. Isn't that wonderful? Hmm. Well, guess what? This is the 23rd week of quarantine that I'm in. 23 weeks. Hmm. But that's all right. I have plans. I've always got a plan. Now, first of all, a bit of housekeeping. I want to show you now my new computer, or rather, an old computer that is being redesignated to go with my flight simulator. Now, this is an X99 motherboard. It's got an X99 processor, and it's got a little bit of extra speed in it. I'm also using an M2 for the hard drive, which is nice and fast. I'm going to be setting this up to use this as my flight simulator number two computer. And of course, the aim is to bring up the frame rate. Several of you have been mentioning that the frame rate is low. Oh, yes, it is. And don't I know it. So, with the second computer taking some of the load, I'm hoping that the frame rate will show a remarkable increase. And for software, I am not using wide view. A lot of people say, oh, you've got to use wide view. But when I contacted wide view, I can't get any answer. So I don't know if they're in business anymore. But I did look around and I did find another site it's called Opus FSI, and they are doing a software that will connect more than one computer, and it seems to be really working. So, I have been experimenting with that. I'll keep you posted on what I find and how things come together, okay? Now, let me tell you about my latest escape plan. Are you ready for this? I have a good friend and neighbor whose name is Mark. He and I were talking via uh, Skype because we can't get together, you know, because of all this COVID business, quarantine stuff. So we do Skype and things like that. So he was talking about how he had a, a flight that he remembered taking that went from Liberty International Airport, which is Newark, New Jersey, all the way to Buffalo, New York. The purpose of his flight was to go to Niagara Falls. Now, here's a picture of Mark at Niagara. He's obviously enjoying himself, isn't he? These are two pictures that he took from the aircraft that he flew on to get there from Newark. Now you can see that these were taken a long time ago. 1999, I think he said it was. And you know that it was a long time ago and before a certain date because, see, the Twin Towers are there. Anyway, he remembered that when the flight took off, it was able to fly up by the side of the Hudson on its departure to get to go to Buffalo, and it afforded all the passengers a wonderful view of New York skyline. You can't do that anymore. They don't allow that. There's this thing about New York and jetliners flying too close. You know how it is. 
Anyway, he wanted me to do a flight that would replicate the route that he took then. So, yeah, I did a little research and came up with some interesting routes. So, the basic flight is the one that's done today is with United Airlines and it's flight 3443. And I'm going to show you the route that that flight takes and then I'm going to show you the slight minor change that I'm going to do. Mm. You know, when I started flying, you know, along with all the pterodactyls in the sky, <laughs> there was an old saying, there are old pilots and there are bold pilots, but there are no old bold pilots. Mm. Well, I, of course, am an old pilot. I was always good. But now this fellow, he wasn't. There was this rumor that he would fly C-47s under the, under railway bridges and under road bridges. Can you imagine? There were rumors that he would fly that aeroplane so low that it would leave a wake in the water over which he was flying. There were rumors that he would fly over desert so low that the twin props would set up a dust cloud behind him. Of course, I know nothing about any of those things. I was a good pilot. I never got caught. <laughs> anyway, today I'm going to let the other one do the planning. And this is how we're going to do it. So we're going to take the route the way it is and then we're going to make some modifications. So let's have a look, shall we? All right. Now, first of all, let's have a look at United 3443, going from EWR, Newark, New Jersey to Buffalo. This is the route. Now, if you notice down here, the departure was to go out and then it turns around and sweeps to go north. And up here, they prefer you to go in on runway, what is it, 22, I think, up there. Now, I checked out all of the flights and look, there are lots of them that United does this all the time. And here... This is the flight plan that is filed. So I go into Simbrief and here's the, here's the one that it comes up with. Now I've set this for a departure of 22 rights and an arrival of 05 at Buffalo. And I've done that for good reason. And I'm going to show you that in just a moment. Now let's go to Navigraph. Here you can see the reason why everything is going around. All the departures, this is the, this is the standard instrument departure. So they go out here, go down to PORTT, and then out, and then up across, and here's where they would pick up uh, neon or neon or whatever they call that. But we are going to make a slight change on that. We are going to go out and we're going to go down to Bagger and then across to here and then up the Hudson River to VC277. Here we go. 
So here's the point we fly to first, and that's waypoint H-O-W-Y-A. We then fly over to Highland, H-Y-L-A-N, straight up then to clock, and then VC-277. I'm going to be setting the MCP to fly at 200 nautical miles an hour and I'm going to set it for 1,000 feet. Yes, I know, well below anything that the FAA would recognize or allow. So I'm going to be flying up here to here uh, all the way up to VC 277 at 1,000 feet. And then at this point, from here to VC 3113, that will be at normal speed. That's when we will do the climb and get to our altitude. But one of the things it will afford is if you notice here, see here's Manhattan skyline. We're going to get to see Manhattan like you've never seen it before. Ha! Well, may as well enjoy it before the FAA arrests me, eh? Now at the other end, because we're going to come in on 05 runway. But before we do that, we're going to fly up here to H-O-Z-I-R because right here, that's where the Niagara Falls are. We're going to make a left and have a good look at the falls before we go back. Now the elevation at Niagara is 700 feet above sea level. We're going to set waypoint H-I-D-U-B and we're going to be at 200 miles an hour and we're going to drop to an altitude of 1,600 feet. And as we go up here and then go around, we'll be only 1,000 feet above the Niagara Falls. So we should get a good view. Once we get to this point, then we will increase the altitude to 4,000 feet so that by the time we get down here, which is Zobso, and if you can look at this, you can see that this is the procedural approach for coming in to Buffalo International. So we will intercept the ILS and the glide slope from 4,000 feet as we come down. So here you can see it's got 4,000 feet and then we come in on a flight path of 055 degrees down to 2300 until we get to the outer marker and then we go down and to land at Buffalo. Now, if we go into here, here you can see what the actual flight plan is going to be. So going back now to here, I'm just going to paste that. And here you can and analyze the route. And there's our route, all laid out. I save that, and then I'll be exporting that as a PLN, uh, what do you call it, PLN file so that we can import it into the various programs. And it will also be imported directly into PMDG. So, if you're ready, and the FAA are not looking, let's go make an escape that we'll be able to talk about later on, shall we?
Wanna go? Come on then, let's fly. So if you're ready, let's get ourselves started by turning on the battery. We have 28 volts, so now we turn on the fuel pumps and over here we turn on the auxiliary power supply and that when it gets going will give us 115 volts which will show up here. What we're going to be watching for is for this needle to climb as the engine gas temperature increases and there it goes and then it will come back down and settle to about uh, between three and four this blue light will come on and that will tell us that we have 115 volts so it's coming up there we are getting ready and in a moment that light will come on good now we've just switched the main bus and we have 115 volts so now we can turn on the galley and get ourselves a brew doing emergency lights no smoking fasten seat belt and over here the left and the right window heat the probes and the hydraulic pumps that's turning on the bleed for the air conditioning so that we can get air conditioning blowing into the main cabin there we turn on the steady light for our navigation and that tells the crew that we are getting ourselves sorted out in here now we turn on the IRS and then it's going to go out there and bring in our GPS location which we have to put in to the FMC because that's the next thing that we have to do is we have to program the FMC well first of all we put in our location it's KEWR KEWR and according to the airport chart here our stand is 114 so we should be 40 north 41.9 74 west 10.5 and that's it so we'll put that into the temporary and then enter it into that root as their origin this is where we cheat our flight plan has already been built we did that earlier so we're just going to bring it in just like that we are Ryanair 186 so RYR 186 we're departing runway 22 right so we'll activate that next we'll go in and we'll do ourselves the fix for our destination and that is KBUF for Buffalo we need a 4 mile radius we need a 10 mile radius and a 30 mile radius now we go into the descent and to the forecast and we'll put in the three altitudes that we need to put in the wind and speed directions for 1013 is our Q and H at the destination now looking at the briefing chart 295.60 is for that one That's for flight level 200 and 296.51 for flight level 150 and 303.39.
for flight level 100 and execute that. Go to the arrival, we're coming in on ILS 5, execute. We're already set to depart, we already put that in so we don't need to worry about that. Now we'll just go through the plan and make sure that everything is correct on the steps. So far so good, no gaps. There's our first gap. So Zobso Plaz, okay. So what we need is we need to put the runway up right there. Then execute that. All right. We have a flight plan. Now we need to go in and do the initialization of our route. We already have our fuel in and the planned fuel is 3020 plus 3499 gives us 6519 or 6.5 closest to it. So 6.5 right there. The reserves is three even, yeah. Cost index is 10. Cruise altitude is 240. And the cruise wind is 289 at 64. Now we need to put in our transition altitude. Do you remember what it is for America? Of course, it's 18,000 feet. Execute that. Go to N1 limit. 15 degrees. Flaps will be five on takeoff. Center of gravity, and that says the trim is 4.75, which we will set on the wheel. And then we have 145 for our V2 at rotation. So we'll put all that information in. Our altitude, starting altitude, is going to be 1,000 feet. Yes. A little different from uh, what uh, people would normally have. Our heading is going to be 219. That's the initial heading. And over here as well for the first officer, which of course is you today. And then 145. The descent minimums are 200. And we're setting that by radio to establish our minimums coming in. The localizer at runway 5 is 108.5 and ATIS is 135.35. Now let's check and make sure that we have a, a good flight plan. Got two green lights that says it's good on the auto throttle and put the VOR1 switches on. We are now ready to make a slight adjustment here into our route. This is where we cheat. And go to legs. Now our first point, we have to remain at 200 miles an hour and at 1000 feet until we get to VC277. That's right there. So we'll put in 200 and 1,000 feet right there and when we get to 
the destination I dub is what we're looking for there it is then there we need to be 200 and 1600 feet I know it says all of those things it's giving and there's an error but it will it will work out so now we are set to do our pushback and start so if you're ready let's get going shall we next thing we need to do adjust the seats turn off the light we'll contact ground and get our clearance to taxi and push back Newick ground Ryanair 186 with Romeo request taxi for takeoff north departure Ryanair 186 taxi to and hold short at runway 2 2 right using taxiway Romeo Kilo Yankee Romeo Zulu contact tower on 134.05 when ready Taxi to and hold short runway 22 right via taxiway Romeo Kilo Yankee Romeo Zulu Ryanair 186 We have our clearance so if you're ready hold tight hold very tight please and we're going to push back and we're going to go and swing our tail over to the right or left if we're going back so break off ask the gentleman to push his back turn off the air conditioning and this time we're going to start with engine number one <coughs> we're looking here for twen uh, 24 when it gets to 24 then we'll introduce the fuel and there's 24 now we're going to be watching this very carefully there's the fuel flow and the oil pressure is building up we need to be certain that we've got oil pressure over there the oil pressure light should come off in just a moment and there it is we have a start so we've got 115 volts, so now we'll switch to engine number two and do the same thing. Again, looking for 24 on the N2 swing. Introduce the fuel. We're watching for the oil pressure to build up and looking for the oil pressure light gold has gone out. And we're going to stop the pushback at this point. Put the brake on. And we have 115 volts up here. So now we're going to switch the power uh, voltage coming now from the main engines and we'll turn the air conditioning back on turn off the APU bleed and turn off the APU turn on the taxi lights go to flaps 5 switch to RTO on the auto brake Okay, so generators are on, probe heat is on, anti-ice is correct, isolation valve is auto-closed, correct, engine start levers are idle, detent, flight deck door is locked and closed, recall is check, flight controls check, flaps 5 and green lights check, and Stabilizer trim is correct, 4.7, yes, correct. Auto brake is RTO, check. Speed brake lever is down, detent. And ground equipment is all clear, and we say thank you very much for the lads for giving us a pushback. 
Now we're going to have to go up Romeo Kilo here and go to Yankee where we turn right until we get to Romeo where we'll turn left. So everything is looking good. Last minute check. Told the crew that we are now going to go break off and a little bit of power to get ourselves unstuck. And we'll start our turn left here onto Romeo Kilo. There's New York ahead of us. You can see the skyline. Sorry about the frame rate, but I am, as I told you, working on that.
Performance MCP check, check. Well, that is correct. And pollution lights is on. The clock has started. And we are set. So, advance the power to N1. We have N1 power. Toga button pressed. And here we go.
place to get a good view of New York as we go past it. And we're going to go over the top of Newark here. Very low. <laughs> oh, well. Ah, and there's the naval yards. And right down there, you see it? Statue of Liberty. Going right over the Statue of Liberty. Now let's have a look at the main part of New York as we go by. going to certainly give the people in the top floor of the buildings underneath us a scare. Wiki's New York scenery that you're seeing here. There's the Empire State Building. In the background there. quite surprised there are no fighter jets at the moment coming up alongside of us. New Yorkers, as you well are aware, would get very nervous with an airplane flying this low. Well, there's New York. And now we're going to get to our waypoint and we'll start to climb to our assigned altitude.
Now, in case you were wondering what these buttons are, this is my way of being able to control the aircraft remotely with the basic functions. For instance, this starts the pushback, and I can push back to this side or to that side. And here I can set the barometer from inches to HPA. And I can go from radio barometer here to ordinary uh, barometer, uh, altimeter barometer right here. Here I push this button and an ATC window comes up. This connects the jetways. This is for sewed on those airports that have them. This controls the door, the main forward hatch. And this is the stairway, that air stair that comes out of the side of Ryanair. Buttons, green one through zero, actually one through nine. Each of them represent just numbers. So for instance, if I'm in the ATC window and I want to push number six, I push number six here and it activates whatever the number six function is. I change this one to be a pause. So this pauses the entire system. So I put this in as a little additional means of controlling the aircraft. I'm sure you have your own ideas and your own uh, ways of doing it, perhaps through a keyboard. I just find this a little bit more convenient. Right, well we're now at altitude, so I'm going to do a fast forward and get us to our destination.
so far the weather is looking good for a view of Niagara and as we get lower to the elevation that we need to be at we shall see what we can see
altitude. And Niagara is directly ahead. Thousand 
600 feet.
checklist. Descent, uh, approach, start switches, continuous, altimeters, check. Good.
there is ten. Disembark, and we'll clean up in here. Decas off, switch off. And Welcome to Buffalo. And now we'll complete the shutdown. So shutdown is complete. We made it, and we didn't crash. How about that? 